Hello and welcome to the Bellbrook High School College Credit Plus informational meeting for the 2020-21 school year. I'm Chris Scoey. I'm one of the high school guidance counselors for the letters A through G. I also help all the students that are doing the College Credit Plus program. So your student will be working with me if they are participating in this program. Let's get started. Tonight, at our meeting, we have representatives from the different colleges that we partner with in the area. From Clark State uh, Community College, we have Katie Boggs. From Sinclair Community College, Alicia Adams. And Wright State University's Kathy Davis. These representatives are the CCP uh, liaisons with our high school. And they're also the same people that your students may meet with if they're participating in these programs with these colleges. So what is College Credit Plus? College Credit Plus was designed to increase dual enrollment opportunities for students to earn college and high school credit at the same time. The purpose of this program is to promote a more rigorous academic pursuit and allow our students to access a wider variety of options. Um, as required by law, we are responsible for paying for the tuition costs for these classes at public universities. Uh, if your student enrolled in a private university, most likely it will still cover the full cost, but there could be some costs incurred that you would have to pay for. There are two different ways that students can participate in the College Credit Plus program. The first way is for students to take college classes at any university, meaning that those students from Bellbrook High School go to and attend any university college classes or online classes through that college. The second way is through the classes that we have at Bellbrook High School that are considered College Credit Plus courses. We'll get more into what those specific courses are later on in the presentation. But we have several classes at our high school that are taught by our high school instructors that, that they're acting as adjunct professors in order to um, provide these College Credit Plus courses at our high school. Who is eligible? This is something that you really need to think about for your student. You need to decide if you consider the social emotional readiness of your student or their organization skills and time management skills. Um, students must meet admission requirements and the deadlines, and they have to take a placement test or have a qualifying ACT or SAT score. These placement tests are what help the colleges deem whether or not a student is college ready and ready to actually take a college level course. Our students that are participating in the College Credit Plus program must schedule enough classes to still be considered full-time students. A student can earn up to 30 college credit hours per academic year. You cannot go over more than 120 college credit hours while in the program. So this program is available for 7th through 12th grade. If you start taking college classes in 7th grade, then you may not go over that 120 credit hours earned through the 12th grade if participating in this program. You may take college classes during the summer, the fall, and the spring semesters. Here's a breakdown of how to figure out that 30 hours per year that are allowed for the College Credit Plus program. It is the 30 minus the high school only credits that you multiply by three. For example, here in my sample, the high school student is taking English 12, Government, Art 1, and Personal Finance as high school classes at BHS. Each of those are multiplied by a factor of three. So the English 12 is a year long class, multiplied by three is three. The art one is a semester class, so it's 0.5 times three equaling 1.5. Included also in this student's schedule are their fall and spring CCP courses. Each of those courses, you count the semester hours. So in this example, the psychology classes were three semester hours and the calculus is worth five semester hours. 
And then in the spring, for example, the biology is four semester hours. So if you look at the total hours the student is spending at the high school, it would be nine, and then 19 total hours that the College Credit Plus classes are. So that would be a total of 28 hours, and that would be under the maximum number of College Credit Plus hours. If this particular student were to add one more College Credit Plus course, then that would take them over the 30 credit hours that is allowed for our, our district to, to pay for those classes. If a student decides that they want to take this class, they, or they have two options at this point, if they want to take the class that they've signed up for, you can drop the class by the drop date, or the student can pay out of pocket for that additional class that takes them over the 30 credit hours. Students will need to work with their high school counselor, myself, and the college academic advisor to complete their College Credit Plus and high school schedule. In a few weeks, our students will be starting their scheduling process for Bellbrook High School. These students participating in the College Credit Plus program must still schedule a full schedule or a full course load of classes at Bellbrook High School even if they intend on taking classes at a college campus. Then after they have been approved for the College Credit Plus program, they will come to me and work out their schedule of what classes they're going to take at the high school versus what classes they would take at the college. After we get the master schedule complete, we'll work on trying to block those classes either in the morning or the afternoon in order for it to work for the student's schedule on where they're going to be during the day. Students cannot leave, come and go during the middle of the day, so that's why we try to block those um, classes in either in the morning or the afternoon. So a student may take two classes here at Bellbrook High School, first and second period, and then leave to go to their college classes for the rest of the afternoon. All colleges have allowable versus non-allowable courses. This link, the allowable versus non-allowable courses are also listed on all colleges' websites. This is an example here that you can look at for Sinclair Community College, where they've listed their level one allowable courses for College Credit Plus students. Students will be held financially responsible if you sign up for a non-allowable course. One example of a non-allowable course is PE, a physical fitness type class taken at the college would not be allowed for the College Credit Plus program. The college advisors will help students know which courses they can take, and that will be based on their assessment scores or their the course prerequisites and the level one for the first 15 hours versus level two courses. You must complete all high school graduation required courses while taking, even though you're taking College Credit Plus classes. Courses must satisfy those high school graduation requirements. This course substitution crosswalk shows you which classes are allowable for those high school graduation state required classes that we need for graduation. One example of the high school graduation required courses, so for English, students could take an English literature class, a communications class, and the, any of those classes would be um, applicable to the graduation required course for English for high school graduation. Failure, failure or withdrawal from a College Credit Plus course. No credit is awarded if a student fails a College Credit Plus class, that is with an F. If the failed class is a required class for high school graduation, you, the student will be required to retake that class and complete before graduation. The student will not be allowed to retake that class at the college, so it's something that they would have to schedule into their high school schedule. Students and families are financially responsible for paying if a student fails a class or withdraws from the class after the posted withdrawal date at that college. 
underperforming students will be placed on CCP probation if they earn below a 2.0 cumulative GPA in the college courses. Students will not be allowed to take a course in that same failed subject area and they will be on probation and can only take one class that following semester if they do not raise it above a 2.0 after that first semester of probation then they will be dismissed from the CCP program. The grading for the College Credit Plus classes all advanced standing programs will be weighted the same within the same within the subject area. For our high school, we weight, we do an additional weight for all of our AP classes. These are the same that weighted grades that students will receive in those subject areas if taking a College Credit Plus course. For example, we have AP Biology at Bellbrook High School. A student will also earn a weighted grade if taking a biology through the College Credit Plus program. An example that we don't weight, we do not weight our art classes at Bellbrook High School. So if a student were to take an art class at the college, that class would not be a weighted class. The Bellbrook High School transcript, on there we show both a weighted and a non-weighted GPA. The 4.0 unweighted scale is what we use for the honor roll and NHS, NHS eligibility. The weighted is what we report on the Common App and other college applications when you send your transcript to the colleges. And then we allow the colleges to decide whether or not they're going to look at the weighted or unweighted by reporting both of them on your transcript. So both the AP classes and the College Credit Plus classes are weighted the same and add an additional weight to the college, uh, I'm sorry, to the weighted scale. For the end of course exams, our students have to take end of course um, tests in specific subjects. The students must complete the actual end of course exam for the subject areas of English, Math, and Science. However, if a student takes a History College Credit Plus class, they can use the grade that they got in that class to satisfy their end of course exam score. Uh, an example of this would be taking Government or PLS 1120 at Wright State. If a student gets a B or better, B or A, they would, that would equal a 5 on their government end of course exam. The other class that this would uh, apply to is the American History or U.S. History end of course test. If a student takes a his U.S. History class, then we could do the same score based on their grade for their end of course requirement. The academic credit trans uh, that translate from CCP to BHS, the conversion is here. Three or more semester hours at a college uh, campus equals one credit at BHS. And then you can see the other for two and one semester hours, what it equals at Bellbrook High School. If a student attends the same college after high school, typically this is an easy transfer. You would get full credit with this transfer. An example might be if a student takes College Credit Plus classes through Wright State University and then decides to go to Wright State University after high school graduation, all of the classes they took in the CC Plus program would already be included in their course history and record on their transcript at Wright State. How students should check the transfer policy, policies of the college of their interest to see if these classes that they're taking will transfer. Typically, in the state of Ohio, um, any classes that our students are taking through the College Credit Plus program in the public universities will transfer. Some of the classes that students take with our high, at BHS with our high school instructors, sometimes those do not transfer because colleges want um, it to be taught by a college instructor. There's typically a paper that students have to fill out at some colleges that will report this, but for the most part, this is very uncommon. Credit is not guaranteed at out-of-state public colleges and private universities, and like I said, some colleges do not accept this taught by our instructors. 
you are responsible for requesting your college transcripts at the end of your high school career for your to transfer your college credit plus credits. You must do this when you apply, or not when you apply, but when you um, start at your college, you must transfer your credits from the colleges that you participated in College Credit Plus to the college that you're going to. Students are allowed to participate in extracurricular and athletic activities while doing College Credit Plus classes. They, students have to report their quarter grades at the end of first quarter and the end of third quarter for classes that are taken at a college most of the classes that are taught at our high school will be included already, except for um, the Chinese class. The, the students um, will report those grades to either the athletic office or to Mr. Whalen in the principal's office. They, they must be enrolled in a certain number of classes to remain eligible to participate in athletics so that you can see this link here where you can click to see what the eligibility guidelines are. This selective service is something that males 18 and up must do. Um, the College Credit Plus program says that if the students do not do this on their birthday, that then the high school is not then responsible for paying for that class, that it will be paid by the um, parent or student in that family. So it's really important that once you turn 18, if you are in the College Credit Plus program and taking classes, that you go and fill out the selective um, service required. Textbooks are included in the College Credit Plus program. It's really hard to keep track of all of these and each college has a little bit different criteria on how students will get their books. Of course, all the classes that are taught at our high school, the books are already included with that. Um, but if a student is taking classes at a college campus or online, first they would start with talking to me to see if I have the book already. Then from there, if I do not have the book, I'll most likely tell them that they have to go through the bookstore at their campus. Some colleges, for example, Sinclair, they went to all online ordering of their books and it's included in the student's My Sinclair account. So each college is a little bit different and the students will check with me on how to get their books. At the end of the semester, students must turn in their college credit books to me or a fee will be charged. These are the college courses, college credit plus classes offered at our high school at Bellbrook High School. Most of these classes are taught by our high school teachers as adjunct professors teaching these courses for this particular college. So under each of the colleges, I've listed the classes at Bellbrook High School and then what class that would be considered at the college. Students must complete the college um, credit plus applications and process in order to take these classes as college classes at the same time they're taking it as a high school class. So under Sinclair's college, um, community college, some of our classes that are the classes that we have at Bellbrook High School, Supply Chain Management, Chinese 3. The Chinese 3 class will only be offered if we have enough students that sign up for this course. So those students that have taken Chinese 2 this school year and want to do that third semester of Chinese, then they would have to register for that class in their course selection when we do this at the end of February. Spanish 3, 4, and 5 are College Credit Plus classes. You can see the course numbers that are listed here that the students would receive for those classes. For Clark State, the AP Stats class is two different courses, first semester and second semester. The same with the College English 12. Those are two different courses, first semester and second semester that students take. With both of these classes, our students will sign up for the full year. So they're going to get both semesters, even though it equals two high school credits or um, for the stats, it's just under two. 
those students will still take the full year of those courses and earn both of those credits. The IED is the engineering intro class and then the CE and DE are in the third year and EDD is the fourth year for the engineering class. So these are all offered as college credit plus courses as well. The EDD pairs up with the engineering 1010 course that's offered through Wright State. For engineering 1010, there's an instructor from Wright State who comes to Bellbrook High School first semester and teaches this course. New for next year, we are offering French 3, 4, and 5 as college credit plus courses. The French 3s and 4s will start in the first intro uh, French class, French 1010, and the French 5 class will be able to earn two different courses, French 1010 in first semester and French 1020 in second semester. Any student wanting to register for college credit plus for these classes must complete all of the paperwork and everything that's due, the applications, the intent to participate forms, and the placement test or ACT or SAT scores before school starts next year. So if these are classes that you're planning to sign up for for next year, you must complete those that paperwork before next year to be in the classes if you want to take them as college credit plus. This is a promotional video that um, Sinclair came and did to promote their College Credit Plus program at Bellbrook High School that you can click on and watch. There's always the benefits and risks that you have to weigh for any program. Let's talk about some of these benefits and risks that we've outlined already. So some of the benefits of College Credit Plus are obviously that it extends the high school curriculum. Students are able to earn both high school credit and college credit at the same time, which in turn is a, very, is a great financial benefit for your students. It's also a savings in cost and time for them by getting those basic education requirements out of the way before entering college. They also get to have an experience and uh, early experience in feel what it feels like to be in a college level class. Now some of the risks include increased student responsibility. There, the parents do not have as much access to the student's uh, teacher grades and all of that as you would if a student was taking the class at Bellbrook High School. There will be scheduling conflicts with athletics, field trips, the spring breaks are different. If we have a weather delay or other two hour or early release day and other school functions. And those things will have to be coordinated because you're supposed to be at Bellbrook High School first of all. Athletic and extracurricular eligibility is a risk. If you are doing poorly in your um, college level course, then you risk being ineligible for these activities. It also affects your GPA. The college transcript lives forever, meaning that the grade that you earn in this college level class will be included on both your high school transcript and counted in your high school GPA, as well as in your college transcript. You must know that you're ready for this level and this risk when you sign up for these to take these classes. It also could affect your financial aid in the long run, depending on when you start this program. You have a risk of the credits not transferring. There's a cost of transportation if you are taking classes at the college. And you also could incur a financial obligation if you drop the course after the drop date or fail the class. Here is the summary of steps that we've talked about today. First of all, you have attended either attended the CCP information night we had on fe tonight on February 5th, or you watched this video to know exactly what we what was said. Secondly, you must complete the intent to participate form by April 1st. By April 
first. This must be done. Students who are already College Credit Plus students, this is the only step that they have to take if it's the, with the same college. So if you're returning to take a class with the same college that you've already taken a College Credit Plus class with, all you have to do is, per, uh, um, all you have to do is complete the intent to participate form. This year, I've moved that intent to participate form to a Google form that requires a passcode to, to complete. Here is the passcode that you need to complete your intent to participate form. It is CCP at BHS. Next, students must complete their applications by May 1st for the fall semester for all colleges that they're participating in. After the application is complete, students must either take a placement test or provide an, a qualifying ACT or SAT score. For placement testing, the complete application must be done before you can do the placement testing. I will offer two times for students to take placement testing at Bellbrook High School. After these two times, it's on your own to make sure that this placement testing is completed. On May 11th at 6 p.m., we'll do a placement testing evening. And then on May 19th, during final exams week, students will have the opportunity to do placement testing in the afternoon during the makeup time. After the students have completed this step, they should receive an acceptance letter in the mail or email with information on scheduling new student orientation. Students taking classes at Bellbrook High School that are College Credit Plus would not need to attend the new student orientation, but students taking classes at a college campus or online must attend these new student orientations. After this, students will meet with me to go over their high school schedule and their College Credit Plus schedule so we can work out all the details of your schedule. This must be done before the first day of school in August. Thank you for watching this. If you have any questions, please feel free to call or email me at Bellbrook High School. And thank you for your um, time.